race number six at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 2.38. It's the Cool Ridge Handicap over 1,600 metres. A fascinating contest in replay. Let's have a look at the last start performance of Skinning Tings. For an inside run, Pike at the top of the home straight. Down the outside, here comes Lenny. Followed further back by Mr Conifer. Corporate Larrikin, the leader, juicing carrots, is trying to hold Adornment in. Adornment gets off its heels. Mr Conifer joins in, though. Mr Conifer on the outside. Adornment. Adornment, Mr Conifer, give it to Mr. Mr. Conifer. Mr. Conifer. I've no doubt at all that King Blitch is the best horse in race number six at Ascot on Saturday, but the map is a big question mark, and that's why I ended up with number three, Skin in Tins. Jade McNaught reunites with this horse, down to 58 kilos, gate number three. I thought the form was okay last start. Drops from a 72 plus into a 60 plus graduation handicap, and I think gets the right run. Box seating behind Tollman and Cocky Dot. Goes on top from number four, Tollman. Now, this is an interesting horse. I've got it mapping as the leader here. Did lead three steps start to go for Mitchell Pateman and won over the 1400 metres. Since then it settled fifth and second but I think from this gate I think that Mitchell Pateman will probably want to go to the, the lead and this horse can improve from its last start performance. Number one is the aforementioned King Blitz. The map is the big query here. Gate number one is not a positive for this horse. It will get to the turn and want to turn right and there's going to be some carnage if there's nowhere else for him to go. He only goes in for third. And then number seven, Cocky Dodd. Now this horse has improved significantly since being ridden on the speed. Mitchell Payman's ridden in, in his last two starts. He, of course, rides Tolman here. Jared Noski takes over. I think they'll be aggressive and looks like being in the breeze. Top selection in race number six is number three, Skinning Tins to beat four Tolman, one King Blitz, and seven Cocky Dog. Race number seven at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 3.14. It's the happy 80th birthday Colin Webster handicap over 1,600 metres. Mr Webster has a runner here in number 10, La Bionda. Happy birthday from everyone at Perth Racing. In replay, let's have a look at the last start performance of your dreaming. From Lipstick Flickers, which is off the rails. This has been a heck of a ride by Shooter. And your dreaming starting to chime in as well. Lipstick Flickers, your dreaming. 150 to go and your dreaming sprints up. Gets the better of Lipstick Flickers. A run for Texas Moon, but your dreaming comes away. Home and hose, your dreaming. Your dreaming wins it by a Length and three quarters to lift. Your dreaming's in really, really good form. The replay race was a graduation handicap, same grade as this, beat lipstick flickers by two and a bit lengths. Now that was run at a decent tempo and it was over the 1,400 metres. I think it's be a little bit slower run and the 1,600 metres, but gets a lovely run on the rails, I think, for Cliff Greed and Stephen Parnham. And if the runs present themselves at the right time, I think your dreaming's going to be the one to beat. Horse I got a lot of time for is number five, Barra Magic. Finally broke through again last start, beating La Bionda over the 1,800 metres. Drops back to the 1,600 here. At least hasn't drawn a horrible gate, but gate number eight means that I think Barra Magic is going to be behind your dreaming in the run, and therefore I'm going with your dreaming. Barra Magic also coming off a really big personal best performance, and sometimes horses are a little bit flat off that. Number 60 is Divine Shadow. Thought it was a reasonable run behind your dreaming in the replay race. Was beaten four lengths. Gets a lovely gate here. Gate number four can certainly improve on that and then number two watch me nay nay will probably settle last here for Paul Harvey and David Harrison probably can't win but uh, certainly goes in the minors hasn't won for nearly 500 days top selection in race number seven is number nine you're dreaming to beat five Barra Magic, six Divine Shadow, and two Watch Me Nene. Race number eight at Ascot on Saturday is the main event. It will jump at 3.50. It is the Sweps WATC Derby, a Group 2 race over 2,400 metres. And in replay, let's go back a fortnight to the WA Oaks win of Tuscan Queen. Lead for home in the Oaks, a length and a half to Mood Goddess. Pike, though, hasn't turned the reins on Tuscan Queen. He said go, and she loomed up with Naughty by Nature running on as well. Pike goes to work, 100 from home. Tuscan Queen's kicked a length and a half to Naughty by Nature. She's home and host. Here's another one for Peter's Investments in the Oaks. Six straight, they've got it. For the first time in this race, is history that goes back to 1888. There's more fillies than Colts and Geldings in the derby and I think one of the fillies Tuscan Queen is head and shoulders above the rest of the field just wins from gate number two we won't go into too much detail number six is Pam Bella now this horse is interesting they went really really quickly in the Natasha stakes and she really appreciated that finished second behind Tuscan Queen and then last start in the Oaks it was a much more slower tempo and she found it really really hard ended up leading the race at one point I think she can improve out of sight here off the Oaks run number eight is Canvas now this horse missed the Oaks with an eye injury certainly a bit of a wild card here probably can't beat the favorite but gate number one and Kira Yule in the saddle can run into the minors and then number two Midnight Blue I've got Red Hot Tip leading this race and not going particularly fast but Midnight Blue was catching Red Hot Tip in the Mel Vista these are a very ordinary 
a bunch of three-year-olds in uh, the boys' ranks, apart from, of course, the ones that have gone over east. I think Midnight Blue, albeit from the back of the field, can run into fourth. Top selection in race number eight is number four, Tuscan Queen, to beat six Pambella, eight Camvist, and two Midnight Blue. Race number nine at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 4.25. It's the Pepsi Max handicap over 2,100 metres, and in replay, let's have a look at the last start second of adornment. Adornment looking for the way clear. He's going to go for an inside run. Pike at the top of the home straight. Down the outside, here comes Lenny, followed further back by Mr. Conifer. Corporate Larrikin, the leader, juicing carrots, is trying to hold Adornment in. Adornment gets off its heels. Mr. Conifer joins in, though. Mr. Conifer on the outside, Adornment. Adornment, Mr. Conifer, give it to Mr. Conifer. The replay race is clearly the main form race here. Adornment was just touched off by Mr. Conifer, who's the top weight for race number nine. Uh, but to, I think she can turn the tables here. William Pike, he keeps the right. Gate number five, I think he'll be in the right spot in the run. Mr. Conifer has drawn gate number nine, has got 59 and a half kilos, and I think Mr. Conifer is going to be three wide the duration. So four on top from number one, Mr. Conifer, who's been really, really consistent for Bruce Watkins. He's had nine starts, five wins and two minor placings. I just think he's going to find it hard to hold out a dormant from behind her in the run. Then number three, which is Paddy Shadow, and it was a little bit disappointing last start, it has to be said, over the 1800 metres in a higher grade. Drops back to the 20 or goes up rather to the 2100 meters here and uh, gets gate number one could certainly improve and then number two here comes Lenny absolutely impossible to predict what this horse will do I think he's got everyone puzzled including the trainer Justin Warwick and his daughter Lucy uh, he's an enigma he's got gate number two here he could pop up without surprising but I couldn't possibly have him on top Top selection in race number nine, however, is number four, Adornment. To beat one, Mr. Conifer, three, Paddy Shadow, and two, here comes Lenny. Race number 10 at Ascot on Saturday will jump at five o'clock. It is the Swept Tonic Handicap, over 1,200 metres. And in replay, let's have a look at the last start win of Celebrity Queen. Wide out, right on its back is Celebrity Queen, though, which is starting to let down with 200 left to travel. Tycoon Legend, Wild Front, now Pike. He goes to work on Celebrity Queen. She's got a little bit of work to do, but she's putting her mind on the task now. Celebrity Queen got the Tycoon Legend. She did gain the upper hand and goes home to win at Celebrity Queen. Celebrity Queen won against the pattern of the day on the 21st of March. Came from the rear of the field under William Pike. Was $1.55. We got the job done really, really impressively. He's going through the grades, has won two graduation handicaps over the 12 and then the 1100 metres. Goes back up to 1200 on Saturday and I think gets the right run, albeit from gate number 10. I think there'll be a fair bit of speed on here and a three wide train in transit. On top from number six, Cryptic Love. Now this horse has been unlucky not to be three from three this preparation. Finally got to, uh, into the winner's circle last start, beating Ocean's 15. The map is the concern for mine. Will be given a start to all of them here, you'd think, including Celebrity Queen. I don't think she can beat the favourite. Then that's number two, Fred Dagg. Now, I think most people pent these horses a 1800 metre horse, perhaps even a 2000 metre horse. So the step up to 1400 metres last start, I thought a lot of people were quite keen, myself included, but he was very, very disappointing. And maybe we've just got this horse wrong. He was very good over the 1200 metres first up. If he reproduces that, he's a player here from gate number seven. Maybe he's a sprinter after all. And then number 13, illustrious tycoon, gate number one, stacks of speed engaged. If he gets a soft run, he can win. If he doesn't, he'll probably run into the minors. Top selection in race number 10 is number eight, Celebrity Queen to beat six Cryptic Love, two Fred Dagg, and 13 Illustrious Tycoon. It's now time to nominate my best bets on the Ascot card. 10 races, I've got William Pike on top in five of them, including the last three. I think the best bets are in race number nine, number four, Adornment to turn the tables on Mr. Conifer, and in race number 10, number eight, Celebrity Queen to win again for Pike. It's easy to stay up to date with everything that's happening at Perth Racing. You can log onto our website, or you can follow us on one of our social media channels. Until next time, bye for now.